Aloha, it's Christy. And what I thought I would do today is just turn the camera on overhead while I'm creating something. I like to do that sometimes. It's kind of fun to share the process. Now, honestly, between you and me, I always prefer just to turn on whatever I'm listening to, some book on tape or some Netflix show, and just do my thing. But from time to time, turning on that camera and just letting you see what's going on is also fun. So this one I thought was particularly interesting. There were a lot of steps to it. It's not my intention to teach you how to do this, but just to kind of let you in on my processes and how my brain thinks when it comes to putting things together for your own amusement or possibly your inspiration. So here you go. Enjoy. I have these individual components and I thought they might be fun together. So I kind of spun things around and looked at it from all kinds of points of view. Because I think there's something to offer in this piece on almost any direction that I turn it. But I ultimately kind of liked this version, which is, um, I don't know if this is the way that I originally did it. I think it was more like this. But I, I like this better. I like it because these little pearls are reaching upwards, which seems amusing to me. You also notice that there's some lines here. I've kind of cut it to get rid of things I didn't like. Again, I made it, I anticipated doing something with it, didn't know at the time, tossed it in the bucket, brought it back out, and now, okay, I'm gonna cut this for the next version of whatever. I also made this piece, didn't finish it, but I'm kind of feeling like that fits in that area really well. And these, as you probably can guess, were originally part of a dragonfly that just did not amuse me. Um, the, the wings were just too clunky, but they definitely kind of work over here um, to add some additional uh, picking up of this kind of grayish color and, I don't know, some additional sparkle and fun. So I'm kind of looking at this like this. This is sort of my plan. And there's a couple of things i got to do to prep this. So I thought what I would do is just sort of play with this while you're watching. Um, I'm not intending to instruct you on how to create anything in particular. Just having you look over my shoulder and sort of see what I do and what my process is and and hopefully that'll entertain you, amuse you, whatever. Um, so that's kind of what I thought I would do. So what I tend to do on something like this, once I've sort of decided where it's going to land and what I'm going to do with it, is um, I'm working on just a canvas here, a wooden canvas, and I'll be adding some more screws to all that. That just helps anchor everything in and then I'll use epoxy clay to assemble it all together. Um, but I like to just kind of uh, make a note of where I put this because once I pull it up to start doing stuff, once I've gone through all the effort of making this look good, I kind of want to make sure I put it back together again the same way. And then this is this piece up here. So hopefully I'll remember what the heck that's all about. Now the other part of this that's really fun before I start getting into the technical crap is just starting to compile all the things that I might want to use with it. I love that part. I've got, like so many of us have, i got a giant stash of stuff. And that stash is just hodgepodge all over. I keep it in a lot of buckets and things all around in my studio. Um, but when it comes to start designing something like this, then I'm going to want to start pulling specific pieces together with the anticipation of them being used. Now, one thing I've got is I've got a bucket full of gold because I just love gold. So any beads that I have that are gold plated, gold filled, solid gold, gold leaf, whatever, this is my gold bucket. So needless to say, since I've used a lot of gold leaf in here, I'm going to keep that bucket pretty handy. I haven't yet used my Smalty that has gold leaf on the back. This is from um, Murano, Donna Murano, Mosaica, and I love these and I haven't had a chance to use these yet. So I'm pulling this out with the anticipation that these are going to fit in somewhere. I'm pretty excited about that. But I also have some just golden colored tube beads. Now these don't have gold leaf or anything in them. You can tell they're a little brassier. But since I've also got these, which are golden coral, the brassiness of these, I think, will offset the shininess of our our real gold stuff. And I think that could work. So we'll just see as we go. Uh, speaking of gold, I have a number of other things that are golden. These are some gold plated beads. These are some more, um, well, I shouldn't say some more. These are some glass beads with gold leaf in it, like this one I got in Murano, which I love. This is a hand blown one with gold leaf. But then these are some other ones with some gold leaf in it too. 
a handful of a few more interesting pearls, because obviously we've used some in here, and I want to bring that up. Again, I've got a little, um, a little enameled ring here, and it's got this kind of, this color in here is more of a alizarin crimson kind of thing. I want to be careful about getting too pink. Uh, because uh, this color has a bit more almost of a redness to the pink. And so I want to make sure that I bring that up. And I think these kind of go along with that pink too. These are some sort of a Raku style uh, glass dagger beads. And they're going to look fantastic to bring in the blue. Which of course I have a lot more of that shell. So I can tie in all of this blue up here and make it look like it belongs. Because at the moment it's just a weird... Um, color that's there for no reason. So I'll, I'll bring that all in uh, as we go along. Then I've got this. This is, somebody gifted me some uh, lampwork glass beads and sadly they had suffered um, and were chipped and broken. So I thought, well, fine, I'll just smash them. And now I have all kinds of little odds and ends and strange little bits. And I think these are going to end up being some nice punctuation here and there. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. And finally, um, this is a little bit of a commercial, I suppose. Um, I have these, um, let me get a bucket to put them in. All right, these bits and pieces from my, as you can tell, pink purple kit. So I carry different kits on my on my shop. And when you, when you watch this, I may still have some available. I may not, um, but if not, I have other kits. And it's got some interesting things in it. It's got some mother of pearl, um, and pearl. So I've got a couple little pearl chunks and then these mother of pearl beads. I love using those. Um, they're just interesting. They may incorporate into this piece. They may not. Uh, some assorted crystals, which I've used in this big piece here. So if they show up again, that's not a bad idea. I've got some purple beads in this, but I probably won't use them because again, I'm trying to go with the pink and golden peach, you know, that kind of color. I don't want to get too purple. So these will just go off to the side somewhere for another project. And ditto with this, although I do love these Charoite um, nugget chunks. I am not going to use them in this piece. This is a purple kite bead, just a glass kite bead, and it's got some green in it. So that may, that may work. Um, and then this is a pale quartz piece. Probably not going to use that. These are some uh, cherry... I don't know what these are. These are quartz. So they might be some strawberry or some cherry quartz chips. Maybe. I'll leave them around, but maybe not. Um, and then a few spiral beads that may or may not be used. But anyway, this is some fun stuff from that kit, which I like. Um, some of it will probably get incorporated. So that's kind of like one of my favorite parts on all this is figuring out where everything's going to go and then assembling all of the ingredients to make uh, the creativity. So I'm not going to talk too much throughout this. I'm just going to work and let you watch over my shoulder, but I thought I'd set it up for you. So um, the next thing I will do is I will add a couple of tiny little screws, uh, and that lets me attach the epoxy clay to this wooden canvas, because wood is, um, it's layers. So epoxy clay will stick to it, but only to that top layer, which means it's gonna just pop right off. But if you put some anchor screws in there, it gives it something to hold on to. So I'll do a bit of that. I'll first start assembling the main components and then just start adding and see where it all takes me. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching and get something out of it. Uh, one thing that helps, this is polymer clay. One thing that helps polymer clay stick to epoxy clay just a little bit better is uh, some super glue. And I'm using polybonder here. I'm just going to add a little bit to the back side. And the reason is um, polymer is a plastic. So uh, the, uh, the uh, cement qualities of epoxy clay are great. And they love to grab a more epoxy clay, the, you know, glass, metal, ceramic, all that stuff. But they aren't, they, it isn't that compatible with polymer or other plastics. So you have to do a little little bit to make them stay put. So I just put a little bit of the, uh, any kind of super glue. I, I just like this one because it's got a brush applicator, which is fabulous. Um, and I've got a link in the description if you want to grab it off my site. I think it's also available on Amazon and other places, but um, I've got that on there. I'll just let it dry and you can use it wet or dry when you're putting it down. And now what I'll do is I'm going to want to connect all the pieces first, just see where I'm at. So I'm going to mix enough epoxy clay to kind of do this whole big thing here and just press all these main components in, make sure I like 
what I'm seeing and then, you know, any little gaps here and there that need some little bits added to it for uh, continuity, I'll do that first. And then we'll just get creative from there and see what happens. So far as the pieces that are made out of epoxy clay, I can just put more epoxy clay on the back and they'll stick right in. You can certainly use the little um, glue trick if you want, just for an extra grab, but it's not necessary. This is uh, epoxy sculpt, my absolute favorite epoxy clay of choice. And you can get that on my website as well, as uh, well as other places. But um, And I also have some tutorials on my website, as well as some free videos here on my YouTube channel on how to work with epoxy clay. Now, I'm mixing up quite a lot. In fact, I'm probably going to have more than I need, but I have some other projects I'm going to use that excess for um, if it's uh, not all used immediately. But I always tend to mix up a little more than I need. Huh, it's just uh, my life. Anyway, I'm trying to eyeball it and make two equal parts. It's actually a little more, I think, on this one. Let's see. And just mix it thoroughly. What do you know? Just enough and this little bit of extra for some things that I'm going to need. And you can see why I wear gloves for this part. these for a couple of reasons. Number one, just to give it a little bit of extra grab. But two, I'm anticipating filling this in and putting something else in there. And this gives me a little bit more of an anchor when I put this on top. So that's my reason for that. By the way, this is my Wow It's Awesome tool, and a good pair of needle, <clears throat> needle nose tweezers is a must as well when you're doing this kind of stuff.
All right, so here's what I've got so far. And I've drawn some little lines in here to kind of get my brain thinking about the direction of the flow. It's really important to me to have movement in my piece. You know, I, I want things to have uh, a nifty way that your eye travels around it. So I'm making things that go off and around and swirling and all that crap. So I'm, I've got my lines coming up here, which I like. And I'll probably, when I put more epoxy clan here, I'll probably just continue all of this that way, uh, coming, going like this. More of the gold, more of the, the teal color, etc. Over here, I've got a lot of kind of curvy things going on. So I was just kind of playing with the idea of just like continuing some lines of some kind so that there's curving over here and a lot of gold, I think. I'm not liking just the way that this particular angle turned out where it's kind of really straight here. Um, so I'll probably cut this away and build up on it and kind of curve that around a little bit more. Um, and, and also, while I'm thinking of it, I went and found some other um, dagger beads. Aren't these awesome? Um, I loved originally, uh, this is a polymer. This whole base piece is polymer. Uh, and then we're building other things up on it. I, I like how this turned out. I think the color's good with the exception of this sort of straight line here, which we're going to work on. But this one is just kind of lackluster. So I'm kind of toying with the idea of putting some epoxy clay on top of here and then adding these dagger beads. So I still get that sort of curve, but it's not just this weirdness over there. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm just going to keep on playing and uh, follow along and see where it goes. there's a little lesson to be learned here when you're creating is um, nothing is, is locked in until you say so. Like I had a lot of components on this thing and I've changed them already. At the time I made them, they made sense and now I'm doing something else and so it no longer makes sense. So you just change it. Don't worry. Don't stress. Don't fret. There's always something you can do. And if something goes wrong, well, you had fun trying, right? So it's not the end of the world. Just keep on moving things and smashing things to your heart's content until you get just what you want. All right, I like that there. Not sure yet what I'll do with the rest of this here. Not worrying about that at the moment. I'm gonna put something in there, which uh, may be this pearl. That might be too much going by that flower, maybe not, let's see. I don't know, that works, huh?
All right, so I'm taking a little breather for a second, taking a look at it. This is an odd stage always because you have some parts that are quite finished, done, looking good, and other big raw weirdo areas, which messes with your eye a little bit. It's kind of hard to see the continuity of everything when it is um, unfinished like this. But I have an idea in my head. I kind of have a picture in my head that I'm following. And with any luck, at the end, the finished piece will be as good or differently good. And uh, so far, so good. So I'm just going to keep on going. So what I'm going to do next is get some dimensional epoxy on here and put some gold leaf on and repeat this Scraffito line art right here. I'm using uh, 24 karat gold leaf, of course, um, for several reasons. Number one, it's the most beautiful, but when you go to do this graffito technique where you're scratching through, it's the most malleable, so you can scratch through without having a lot of um, crackle where you don't want it. So I love that about uh, 24 karat gold leaf. Um, what I'm doing first is the hardest part to get good coverage is down underneath some of these swirls and things. So I'm essentially going to go through first and kind of define areas that had um, not complete coverage anyway and turn those into part of the design. So it's always about intentionality. It's like everything should look like you meant it, whether or not you did. Uh, if it was a happy accident, that's nice, but it always should look like, like, oh, yeah, that, that definitely, I see why she did that, or that looks really good there, you know, so I'm always kind of going with that. So if I have an area that I know was problematic, instead of it just being irregular like this, I'm going to do something like that to make it look good. So that's my, that's my plan at the moment.
All right, we're going to tackle this last bit. But when you weren't looking, I added a couple things. The camera was off and I didn't realize, but I put in the last of my glass golden balls from Murano. I felt like I wanted to echo this little leafy business here, so I added a little bit more in there. And I had another glass fragment I just tossed in. So just a little bit here and there. All right, let's get on this part. Let's see what happens. I'm also going to put a little bit behind a couple of these things that are sticking out. I always love to go off the edges, but then I am always worried that these little things might get broken, so I'll prop them up a bit. Okay, I think I've got pretty much everything covered. Um, there's a bit of a line here where this one ends abruptly. I, I like this and I chose to do this because I just wanted something uh, to continue the flow but not to introduce another color or more busyness. But you know what I found is I found these really cool little coin pearls that would transition to kind of uh, minimize the look of that line of sight there. So I'm gonna just take a little ball of this and place it here. This is one thing I love about epoxy clay is um, you can just put things on top of things that easily. So we'll put one there. Let's see what else we got. I don't want to cover up any of my little, little bits in there. I think they turned out pretty good. Here, maybe. And then, of course, we're going to need a third one. that looks pretty good. Let's see if we need another one. Nope. And this is kyanite, by the way. I carry this on my store, too. Um, I'll put links in the description on some of the stuff, the gold leaf and, you know, shelves bits and, and kyanite bits and stuff. But I kind of feel like that gives our transition a nice flow. And I don't know. What do you think? Didn't I tell you that when um, it's only partially finished, it's hard to see the whole completed thing, but once it's done, then it's like, oh, okay, that works. All right. I'm going to look it all over, make sure. Oh, and just one little thing. Um, I've got clay that goes, epoxy clay that goes around the edges, but I haven't gone all the way down to the base. Sometimes I put more clay there and I continue to mosaic all the way to the edge. Other times I just paint it. Um, I don't know which one I'll do this time, but something. All right. So my favorite part now, it's done. I'm looking it all over, and I'm thinking, yeah, that turned out pretty good. That's a good feeling, and that's why we create, right? <laughs>